Namade Bookmark, Ngapake Ga Yungo, and everyone else sitting in this room. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, the Gomach people. My name is Michael Gadingori Yunapingu, and I'm Dr. Yunapingu's grandson. I'd like to summarise my life to you all, as I think it is very important for everyone to sit down and listen to. My brother and I grew up most of our lives in Adelaide taken care of single-handedly by our mother, who is also a foster carer to many past and present, and adopted by one Jack Marika, who was a Rutajingu leader. We were encouraged from a, from a young age to go to school and make the most of our education. We were also encouraged to commit to sports and experience a range of programs, which allowed us to gain connections and interests. It was hard for us to maintain our own language and culture as we lived on the other side of the country. But we always knew this land was part of us and who we are. As I grew older, I started to have ambitions on what I wanted to be, and through the many opportuni opportunities my mother gave me, I've been able to chase them. My dream is to run in the Olympics one day, be a sports scientist, working in elite sporting faculties, and also be a mentor in Indigenous health. Right now... <laughs> Uh, right now I'm halfway through completing a sports science degree at UniSA and have represented the state in the 200 and 400 metres in Sydney. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my brother's dream is to be a filmmaker. He has already won awards and is part of the South Australian Film Corporation. So a lot of you in this room may be thinking, why did I just summarise my lifetime, type, lifetime achievements to you? Well. There are so many younger kids outside this room who want to be something when they grow up. Everyone has a dream. Prime Minister, you had a dream, right? <laughs> uh, the only problem is they don't have the opportunities to get to that dream. We all, Balanda and Yungo, have to work together to figure out a way in which kids can carry on our culture, yet gain as much education as possible. Education allows kids to learn. Learning allows kids to gain ambitions, and lastly, ambitions allows kids to live and strive for something every day. Too many times, young have been let down by lack of opportunities, but it's time this stops. Think of ways, with all the money we got, there's surely ways. Setting up boarding houses for young interstate, more programs promoting education. These are just some suggestions, and I'm not even a politician. <laughs> <laughs> Our family, for example, have been rejected by private housing rental in Adelaide over 20 times. Yet we have seen other people after us being approved. I'm not suggesting racism or discrimination, but why is it that under Yungo, we are allowed to be constantly rejected, yet other families are allowed to be approved after us? Our dream is to have a bigger house, to allow other Yungo kids to board and go to school in Adelaide. Staying with us would allow them to ease into a city lifestyle, plus that uh, ease into a city lifestyle. I've seen countless times Indigenous kids from communities dropping out of boarding schools because they cannot handle the transition from community life to city life. There are so many instances whereby young are not being approved the same opportunities to excel forward. We all need to work together now or else young are never going to move forward. Kids aren't getting the opportunities, therefore resort into constant lifestyle of drugs and alcohol. We cannot sit here and say every, everything is fine because at the end of the day, it really isn't at the moment. We all have to focus on our future generation. These kids are our future, this country's future. Give them the opportunities they deserve to have. We need to work on building this pathway together with true commitment from all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.